Hey, it's Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It is November 5th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Fridays, and this one's going to be pretty quick today. There's not a lot of trades. The volatility still there today. It's calmed down some, but you can still see that you get these big moves in one direction or the next, and that and when it doesn't continue on and with a trend that makes it a little harder because you're thinking you need to be going long and then suddenly it's rocketing down and then you start to get in the down mode and then it's rocketing up so it makes it a little difficult to trade these kind of days you just have to follow the price action you have to make sure you draw your really micro trends and channels and follow the rules and that's really the only way you can do it on a day like this notice the the blue box here that is the FOMC announcement. Uh, it was really a mute point today. It didn't amount to anything. Uh, but you never know. That's one. If there's any of the news items you have to respect, it's FOMC day. And I always recommend being flat about an hour prior to that news coming out. and uh, Or actually not entering any new trades an hour prior and then being flat going into the, to the news just in case. And you can see that uh, really that last hour, not much happened. And that's what happens. People just start sitting on the sidelines waiting for that news to come out. And then you can see it kind of spiked up and down a couple of times. But the price action still followed through. And um, you get a break of this and a couple of legs up. And then we're reversing going the other way. So everything still worked out. Price action still works out. Even on this, you had this spike up and then we went into this channel. So this is a spike in channel. And the big picture overall, it, we started out when I came in around 7 this morning. This was an uptrend. And so you want to see, you know, you want to measure that move. And, you know, in case you get a measured move. But we, we couldn't get past this 35, 20, 25 area. And in the big picture, really, from 8.30 on, really from about 5 o'clock this morning on, this is just a range, just sideways. But this was still part of the early morning trend. You got your two-legged correction, so you want to look for a possible measured move. And we just went sideways. And so there's a clear range here. You, you can't really play this range. You just about have to play the short-term stuff. Uh, you just don't get many setups off this range at all. So not much there in that case, but it's nice to know what kind of day it is, just so you know once it gets up here. By the time it got up here, you you if it turns down, you're really expecting prices to try to go to the lows again. So, of course, that's right into the 2 o'clock hour, so it doesn't leave you much time anyway. So this big... Or this large range here doesn't really help you a whole lot, but if you you know you still need to try to find these things just so you get a feel for the day. Uh, but let's back out. We'll talk about the trades and we'll wrap it up again. No chart lessons on Friday, so um, we won't be back again till Monday. And hopefully, maybe by Monday they have this election resolved uh, because if this continues on, I can see the market continuing to be kind of volatile, and it probably will be anyway because. These are just strange times, and I don't ever remember a year of volatility like we've had this past year. Now, granted, we have high volatility, and we've had it in the past, but usually it lasts a few days or a few weeks at the most, and then things are back to normal again. Well, people come in now when the market's not real volatile, they, they, they want to know what's wrong with it, newer people. And really, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, when something slows down, we're just kind of going back to normal. So, uh, but when you when this is all you've ever seen is the high volatility, a normal day seems like something's wrong with the market. So, when it's not, but hopefully we'll be back there soon. But anyway, let's talk about the trades. When I came in, seven o'clock actually comes right here on this bar, and notice we had this spike and this channel up, and you can see we're losing momentum here. We couldn't get back up there, and. Uh, we get this break right here and really we were almost kind of going sideways by that time and you can kind of see that working across there this actually should be just a little bit lower here this one a tad bit higher 
I like that right there. So anyway, um, still don't have that quite right. Not that it really makes that big a difference, but let's just leave it right there. I'm not going to mess with it and waste a bunch of time, but uh, you get the gist of it right there. Um, we get the break and we get two legs up and we reverse. Normally you would look for it to retest the high, especially on a move this big, but uh, we turn down here and that's a second entry short and you don't really have a trend line here yet, but being that little distance away from the EMA, we're probably going to come back and, and we could make another leg down like this one. And that's really what ends up happening. We make two legs down, but, but, you know, measure this leg. And then there's that one. And that would have been your measured move. And that got you almost to the tick basically. So that's a good measurement and that's two legs in the middle. So you, and that looks like, there's actually two legs down in that move, but um, you would expect another leg down here if we turn down and start trending down a little bit here. Uh, you did have to think about the possible range, and that's really what I'm playing here. I want to back up a step because um, the only reason I like this short, because we're still looking for a retest of the high, but we're in this range here. We had a failed breakout. But notice we made that high and we come back and we make a lower high here on a second entry short right off that resistance up there. And that's why I like that one, just to ride it back down. And that's what it does. It comes back down. We actually end up breaking lower and you really just don't get a setup. But of course, draw that trend line and we actually come back and test it a few times. But you got this support here and prices are not getting through there. So you can't risk trying to go short there. And so just sit tight and then we move and actually... I would also look for a measured move down similar to that range. If you draw that and then you draw your support across there, we got a perfect measured move based off the range as well. So you had two targets there that both give you basically the same spot and they both got you right there. So uh, unfortunately, you don't want to go short into this support, and when this breaks on down, we're almost there, so there's not much you can do there. But notice we uh, we bounce. We actually get a break and a new low here, plus the measured move down, and then we come back, and we get back inside of... Um, we may, well, Actually, we don't get back inside of that. We just... We get we create another support level across here, which actually doesn't come back into play till late this afternoon. So that's why that line's there. You wouldn't have necessarily had this big line already there, but once you start getting across here, you want to, you know, once you start seeing that support right across there, draw a line, and that's why that line's there. So you wouldn't have had it yet right in here, but as we come down, we made those lows. We come down, we test it again. And then we make a double test of it. So we made the lows here. We test it once. We test it twice. There's a double test there. There's also a second entry long. Notice this new high, high right here. Actually, it's a double top. Count it as a new high. First entry, second entry. Uh, so I like going long there because it's a double test of the lows. It's a second entry long. And it's a good signal bar. And off it goes. Um and we're just kind of working higher and then finally we come back we get another second entry right here but signal bar is not very good so I, I don't like that trade it's a little it's looking a little congested but this is what these strong trends start to look like and so we may be on to the next leg uh, we talked about this yesterday we've talked about this a few times lately when you start to see these kind of moves that real shallow corrections they just keep going higher and higher with lots of stems and doji looking bars. That's a strong trend. It doesn't look it, but it is. So anyway, you'd want to wait on a higher low here, which comes here. Uh, too high, really, and not a very good signal bar. You get a failure here. I didn't mark it because it's just too congestive. But it being a trap and having enough room, uh, you may take that trade. I'm not crazy about it. We'll mark it all the same but i'm going to mark it as aggressive 
I think you're better off to wait on a better trade, but you know, there's reasons to like that trade. Um, and we move on up and then we sell off here, get a correction and you know, just don't get a chance to enter this. You don't want to be entering in this congestion up here. The reason we're forming that congestion though, is because prices are overdue to come back. Look how long it's been since we, you know, last time we touched the EMA was back here. And so that's 20 minutes, which has been a long time today because we've been all over the EMA the whole day so far. Um, but you pull back to the trend line again, that looks like one leg down. It is one leg down. So I'm going to wait on a really good setup here, a higher low and maybe even a reversal pattern. And we get a higher low here, but it's an inside bar. It does make a matching low, uh, but that's congestive looking. So I just, I'm not crazy about it. I, I think you ought to wait on a reversal and you get that here. Um, your stop would actually go below this bar, but the reversal happened on the break above this bar. So your entry would be one tick there if it turns higher and then your safety stop has to go below the swing low. So that's down here below this red bar. One tick below it was where your stop would go. And this turns out to be a great move. We run up, we come back again, but no setup there and you just don't get another chance. And then suddenly we're up here at the overnight highs. Uh, or actually we make the highs of the day right there. So yeah, um, it's later before we come back here again. So, but you do turn that off the upper side of your trend channel. You make a lower high here, but no setup. And again, it just falls so quickly. You might look at that as a failed second entry long. It breaks higher and turns down. I didn't mark it. There's a little bit of room back there. Um, and it is a reversal and you are expected prices to come back to the trend line. So it's another one you could argue to be green. The reason I didn't mark it was because at all, the reason I only like it to be green really is because there's three or four bars stacked up there. So, um, it's like congestion. So it could tick lower and turn back and come back up again and go higher. Uh, the odds are we're probably headed to the trend line and it is a failed second entry long and it may trap people and you can see it rockets down pretty quickly. So, uh, so there's reasons to argue far and against that one. So, um, but anyway, then we just, we, we get down here to the trend line and we don't get any rejection. We actually get a break of it. We're just kind of working sideways and we come back again. I don't see any longs down here at all. There's just no setups and the bias is still kind of up. So I don't see any reason to be going short yet. And so you don't really get a chance to short this thing either. You could argue for that to be a lower high on a second entry short on a breakout. So that's a possibility. Um, right there. And the problem with this one is I don't know which way it broke out first. I'm assuming it went lower, then broke out the high side, then came back down. But I don't know that to be right. So if you do enter this one, um, you might get stopped out. Your stop generally would want to go above the last high, which was here. And uh, it looks like we even want to tick higher than that one. So actually, I only wanted to make that green anyway. So that one's a little tricky, and I'm not sure which what how it really played out. If it broke higher first and then turned and went down, then you might enter. Um, but otherwise, you really can't enter on this bar itself when it closes because it's too neutral. So the only way you could play that was on engulfing if it broke higher first and then turned down. And of course, if it broke lower first, you you probably just got stopped out on that trade. Uh, it breaks on higher here again. And that's the thing. This thing's got an upward bias. So that's another reason it's a little dangerous shorting that right there. But it does fit our entry criteria. And of course, we turn down finally. We rock it all the way down. I don't see any reason to enter along here. And then we're just right back in this. I did mark this one just simply because you made a high, you test it once, and you test it twice. So you got a double test there. And you've only got one big leg down. So you and you, you would expect prices to try to make another leg down, 
But at the very least, you're going to come back probably down. You just came off the highs here three times, so you're going to go back and test the lows. And notice that's what it does before it ends up working lower. And so I like that second entry short and a failed second entry long uh, and a double test up there. And so for that reason, I do like that one. And it's good for a scout, and that's probably it. And you, you just, it just, we're too sideways to hear, enter any more and too close to the lows. But then we break out and we come back, we test that once. Then we come back and we test it twice. And then we come back a third time. And this actually breaks higher and turns and goes down. And so, that, so not only is that a failed second entry long on a double test, a uh, triple test of those, of that support. It's also a second entry short, but it, it, it's hard to see because it sets all up in one bar. Let me back out of here. But you can see we're working up and we turn down and then suddenly uh, we turn down right there. And then we open and go higher before turning down again. So it's a double, it's a second entry on an engulfing bar all in one bar. So it's a little different, but it's still a second entry short. And so I like that trade just because it, it tests this support three times. It's a second entry short. It's, um, again, the triple test, all of that. And we're trending down here too. So uh, we don't really get another good setup here all the way down here, unfortunately. It's just one of those days where we're not getting a lot of setups and of course, we get a little overshoot down here and we bounce off those lows from the uh, from earlier today, which are right along here. Oops. So, yeah, it's a shame we don't get any opportunities down through there. But then we come down here, we make a low. Try to go lower once. We try to go lower twice. This actually breaks lower and turns up. Uh, your long is one tick above that bar because and you still got room to get out at that point. I don't think I would go long right there. Um, it's just right into that EMA. And this is a little congestive still. So that's another reason. But I just like it because it's a reversal. It, it's at a support area where we bounced a few more times and it's tried to go lower three times with that triple test. So even though you got a little congestion there, it's because prices just can't go lower. And so we're probably going higher here, we're probably at least headed back to the trend line, but we've, we've also already had a break and a new low in place. So that's, so we're kind of looking for a reversal here. Understand this is not a reversal pattern though, because we're just going sideways. There's not a lot of rejection there until here when this breaks lower and turns and goes out the other side just go long one tick above that one and that's starting to look like rejection where these are do not and the thing is this one could always back up and end up closing down here and not really looking like re rejection again but the fact that it broke lower and failed quickly and turned up after and so that's three times to try to go lower we're going higher there and this is another spike in channel and you do get a higher low right here, but uh, prices break lower and they turn up, but they can't go out the other side. And there's not a lot of room back to the trend line, although we have had the break and a new low. We still could turn down and make another leg down there. So it's just a little aggressive. And of course, that takes you into 1 o'clock so, or 12 noon. So we're not going to enter any new trades. If you're managing a trade through here, that's fine. Just be out before 1 o'clock when, you know, maybe 10 till, quarter till at the but 10 till at the latest, just in case. And uh, uh, so we spike up and go into a channel. And when we come come out at, uh, you know, one o'clock was right in here. And you can see there's just really no effect. And so about 15 minutes or so is what I'd kind of call. I'd say stay on the sidelines at least 15 minutes. And we're just still working kind of sideways and, Finally, we come back and we get another one of those tests where we've tested the support multiple times. Um, and you got a little room back to the EMA and all. Um, and we've only got one. We got a close outside and one leg up. So if we take off, we're probably going to get that measured move. And 
and you can see there it is right there actually actually it's a lot bigger than that but it probably starts from here and if you move it over here still got a lot more than that but anyway that's what you would have been looking for a measured move there and um, that takes us into two o'clock and I don't see anything else here I like um, there is a second entry long right here but that's an inside bar and they're not very reliable and you can see it didn't go very far before it turned and went down because you've already had your break and a couple of legs up here so you would expect from right here with the two-legged correction you would expect you would expect a measured leg down and so measure that leg and look for a leg down from there and you can see we got it before it went a little further it's not uncommon to get that target and then try to go lower one more time and then fail so anyway that's what I saw today still took longer than I expected uh, it's 20 minutes worth but you, there's the big picture again we spiked up and just went sideways really we tried to we had an attempt at two legs but prices just couldn't do it so but anyway i'm not going to beat around the bush today i'm ready to wrap this up and uh, call it a day and uh, again no chart lessons tomorrow uh, hopefully maybe by the time we come back in monday things will have settled back down and kind of get back to normal we'll just have to see um Anyway, I hope you had a good trading trading day today. I hope you've had a good week. Uh, good luck tomorrow, and we'll be back again to do this on Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.